Man is the reason those street dogs are there. Those dogs exist in the street, the same reason the cows exist in the street. Mankind has uh, used the dog and the cow to survive. And I think that because we need those animals in our lives and we've created the existence of dogs in the street, I think we have a responsibility to take care of the dogs that have ended up in the street through our negligence and through our uh, need of the dog. I think we have that same responsibility, though, to every animal that we care for. My name is Dr. Julie Hogue. I'm a veterinarian from the USA. And I met Jan at the Cat Center, and she introduced me to Dr. Joshi. Uh, and I began to work with Dr. Pranav Joshi and the Bhaktapur Animal Welfare Society. Street dogs are a problem in virtually every uh, nation that does not have some sort of animal control program run by their government. In a country like Nepal, they don't have the government funding to control the stray population. You add into that they don't have the money or the culture to neuter their animals. And what that adds up to is you're going to have endless numbers of unplanned puppies and kittens, unwanted puppies and kittens that have no homes for them and nowhere to go. Periodically, when the number of street dogs got too high, they would put out poison. They used to put out strychnine and poison all the street dogs and then start over because it's cheap, it's effective, and it's fast. Fortunately, thank goodness, the Nepali people don't want to poison their street dogs. They like the dogs. They just don't have the money, um, really, or the understanding of the concept of neutering the animals so that they don't breed. I think Kathmandu has at least four different programs trying to do animal birth control uh, where they spay and neuter and re-release them back to the street. I worked extensively with Dr. Joshi, uh, Pranav Joshi, to develop the Bhaktapur Animal Welfare Society. Street dogs are our problem. And how long are the foreigners or the white people going to take care of them and help them? Unless and until someone local stands up for them, the problem is not going to be solved. Uh, namaste. I'm myself, I'm Pranav, and professionally I'm a veterinarian. And uh, it's a really difficult profession in Nepal and all around the world as a veterinarian because we are three, uh, like normally we study the same thing we go for the school for five years we have a very strong input for human health and human life that's why nowadays we call it as one health issues right but still we are categorized as a second graded medical professionals because uh, we have the involvement in the vaccine products and we have the involvement in food products and we have the involvement in medicine products and still though we are not recognized in the society i don't think the dogs whether they are stray or whether they are own they get a proper treatment because we don't have facilities we don't have trained manpower so i don't think that things are going good and we don't have uh, other facilities for dogs so mostly they keep dogs if they have any serious issues, they put him to sleep. In my uh, analysis, what I've seen is the number of increased population of dogs are more in the urban areas rather than rural areas. In my analysis, that's the result of availability of the edible garbage because you have restaurants here, you have you throw foods all over, you have human waste all over, you have slaughterhouse waste all over, and then that helps to proliferate the rate of upcoming puppies or upcoming dogs. They run around and they get hit by motorbikes, they get hit by cars, they get hit by trucks. That's the thing which is seen in the dogs which lives near the highway. The other is uh, they are beaten up by the local people because they, they don't like them. The hotel people are mostly uh, against dogs because the dogs bark all night. They cry, they fight and then they don't get any guests in their guest house. So uh, like uh, here for an example, Bhaktapur is a tourist based city where the foreigners come here as a tourist, they stay in the hotel and then how th this is how the business runs. But most of the tourists they don't like to stay in Bhaktapur because of the dogs. 
And if the business is ruined by the dogs, the hotel owner, they get pissed off by dogs and they want to get rid of dogs. And they complain in the municipality and the municipality, they don't have vets. So the, uh, the uh, straight option they see is poison the dogs. In Nepal, we don't have the concept of sterilizing dogs. People don't know, like if they have a dog, they need to get sterilized so that they don't produce unwanted puppies because we don't have trained vet for spawn animals that's another issue that that's the reason we are having a lot of unwanted dogs in the city or in the country and I sterilize around 500 dogs in a year after the earthquake the scenario is completely different because the uh, old city was completely devastated and it was evacuated and people sift uh, to the outskirts of the city and we had no street dogs inside the city and what we witnessed was the foxes, because we have Bengal foxes infiltrating the city. They come in the riverside area just to eat the uh, slaughterhouse waste, which is dumped in the river. And they come to eat the slaughterhouse waste. And uh, during the earthquake, it was very easy for them to go inside the city. And they went inside and then they transmitted rabies to the dogs. And then we had a lot of rabies during the earthquake. Uh, we work for uh, rabies control, like normally we vaccinate dogs and then our number of dogs we vaccinate in a year is around 1500 to 1800 dogs in a year. Basically we are trying to upgrade the technology that we have. Like uh, I would say I am the only person who does the vaccination with the blowpipe. And uh, I use the blowpipe, long range blowpipe and short range blowpipe for the vaccination of dogs. Normally we do uh, rabies vaccines in camp on World Rabies Day, World uh, Veterinary Day and Kukurtiha. That's the big events. And whenever we find any rabies outbreak in any area, we go there and we vaccinate all the dogs. 100% dogs are vaccinated there. So that if the do rabid dog bites any dog in that area, if we revaccinate them, the virus goes up and then it dies within three days. <laughs> Uh, it started in May 2004 and our founder is Jan Shanta, who is a British citizen. She saw the like animal sufferings on the streets and she wanted to do something for the dogs so uh, she found out like a center in uh, India, HIS. Health in suffering, so he went there and got some ideas how to uh, do like animal birth control program and do rescue work. So uh, she, with the help of like them, she started cat center in Kathmandu. So like per month we spare around 120 dogs. Uh, so in a year it's about averaging about 1500 dogs we sterilize. Uh, and sometimes like we do e extra vaccinations like during World Rabies Day or sometimes on like uh, communities like request. So we'll do like extra 1000 dogs like vaccinations on those times. I think people should be more animal friendly, you know, first. Um, like it should be a, like people like a lot of road accidents, which means people Road accident involves people, you know, somebody is there hurting them, so. I mean everything, like driving is just one, sometimes people will just beat the dog, you know, to death, sometimes. I mean, you know, some, some are like accidental, not, not all accidental, like incidental, but many, many of them are, you know. It, lo it looks like people were actually trying to kill the animal. So. Human violence, fracture, bone, like due to road accident there will be fracture and uh, some dog we have to, we can treat, some dog we have to amputate, so there are those kind of cases. We help the dogs. It's like a hospital. Oh, that's a little. 
know that. We also see a ton of distemper. Yeah. We see rabies far more commonly than you would ever experience it in America. We see, um, gosh, we see basically every infectious disease you can see. Uh, we see a ton of distemper. We see a lot of parvo. Parvo and distemper and rabies are completely preventable with vaccinations. Uh, anaplasmosis, um, Babesia, and E. canis, we could prevent those if, they, if we can just keep a flea and tick pre preventer, a flea and tick repellent on the animal. Like every day we need to, like the dogs are here, they need antibiotics, they need uh, some dogs like we need to change the bandage, for example that one. So every day the vet team they are busy. Okay. I mean, like every day they have to go to every dog and um, according to the medication list we have to provide the medicines. Like this one, so it's a road accident. Eye damage, and uh, we have to take out the tissues and stitch, stitch the skin. So now we only have one. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So now we like uh, if if we just leave it like that in the street, it will just become infectious. Um, rescue cases where dog will be just lying around in the road. And we bring them and we. We see like there's a wound and inside there are like uh, hundreds of maggots and um, we take them all out and some dogs we can save, some dogs it's too late because uh, the maggot has already uh, infected and uh, gone to inside, you know. Uh, yeah, so we have to put them down, some dogs die themselves and uh, some dogs we, we, we can save, the lucky ones, like the one we get fastest, earliest, in the early stage we can actually save them. Skin disease mostly it starts with the food allergy, which is very uh, unnoticeable in dogs because the stray dogs they don't have choices to eat like whether they like it or not they have to eat to survive, and grain has been proven as allergic allergen for dogs, and most of the dogs they are fed on grains and they produce allergy in the body. If you have if the dog has skin allergies, the skin immune system is suppressed, and then the fungal infection starts along with the bacterial infection, along with the uh, mites, which will get chronic, which will get advanced form, and if it's untreated, that it goes uh, increasing, and they'll have the severe conditions, skin conditions. So there's a lot of skin disease here. The Nepali street dog population has a very high percentage of a genetic lack in their immune system, a genetic defect in their immune system. And so the street dogs of Nepal are unable to resist. In fact, they're not able to clear it from their systems. So most of these dogs have mange. Um, the common name for Demodex is mange. Turns out there's also a second type of mange here called sarcoptic mange. Demodex not terribly itchy, but Demodex will cause their hair, all their hair to fall out and they get sunburned. It will also allow them to get secondary sarcoptic mange infections, which itch terribly. And when they itch their skin, the dirt in this environment uh, causes infections in their skin. So a lot of these dogs have itchy, swollen, painful infections. When they lay down their skin, instead of being nice and warm on the pavement with their fur, they're freezing at night because they have no hair coat. When the sun shines, they get the skin gets sunburned and it gets further damaged. It really does shorten their lives as well because they dehydrate quite easily with uh, the raw skin and the missing hair. And you add into that, they also have skin disease of malnutrition. Most of these dogs are getting nothing more than garbage. If they're lucky, they might get some rice. So they don't have enough protein, which means they don't have the proper amino acids, and they, have, they don't have the proper zinc and magnesium, vitamins and minerals, so they get skin disease along with some other things. Uh, you add that all together, and the, the dogs are very often quite miserable. Yeah. There's wounds, flights. Maybe it's all over his body. 
<laughs> municipality has to take a step in the awareness program about uh, not uh, throwing the edible garbage outside so that the dog can eat. If we don't have proper food, we can have the balanced population. So that's the first thing. And then we should uh, educate people about dogs. Why do dogs bark at people? What would you do if you are chased by dogs? What would you do if you are bitten by a dog? So how would you identify or differentiate between the baby dog and the normal dog? It is. It can be done only by awareness thing. And another thing is, municipality has to have a trained veterinarian so that if they have any animal issues, they don't have to rely on anybody else. And the government people like forest department or the wildlife people, they need to lobby with the other trained vets who are trained for wild animals and who are trained for small animals too, so that we can work together for the better result. The new new generation we have found like in our like we use social media to update the community about our work also also to interact with them. So we have found that the younger generation are more responsible towards animal compared to the compared to our parents. You know? uh, the education level is rising, and uh, we've done a lot of uh, we've done a lot of. Uh, uh, public awareness programs, we go out uh, in the field and we vaccinate dogs in front of people and then we tell them that now it's safe and uh, we go to schools and we, we try to educate the children, give them give them the, the knowledge about what is uh, street dogs, what are they suffering, you know, so just letting people know about the reality. Because most people are uh, ignorant by default, you know, they need to be told. Yeah, so um, the awareness level is rising. Right now, we get a lot of Facebook messages for uh, uh, sick and injured dogs. We get a lot of phone calls every day. We get emails. There are foreigners who are here who, who see a sick dog and they will try, they will search on the internet and try to find cat center and other similar organizations. So it is increasing actually. I think it's changing for the better. I see a lot of people reaching out and learning. Now, this trip back, I found out there are several professional dog trainers now, and there's a kennel club, and they're learning uh, to train a lot more. So there's a lot more um, learning happening about the dog. And now there's also, uh, every Friday, over near Patan, there is a program open to everybody that wants to learn. It's called Coffee with the Veterinarian. And it's Dr. Joshi and his veterinary team and the vet students from the veterinary college and they come and they see patients and they teach about vet care. We're videotaping it and we post it on YouTube. So anybody that wants to see these can go and watch them on YouTube and we hope someday to make them available on TV, on local Nepali TV. We must practice animal birth control. We must do that. It's not expensive and there are veterinarians in town trained to do it. We must also continue to pressure the Nepali government to provide some resources for animal birth control. That would be number one. The number two thing we must do is we must ensure vaccination for rabies and distemper. If we can vaccinate even for rabies, not only will we protect the human population, but we'll also protect, protect the endangered species populations because the dogs are the conduit for rabies between uh, the wildlife and the human population. Nepal can improve in two ways as Nepal manages to get the street animal population under control. The first obvious way um, is simply health and disease. The less uh, you have dogs on the street, the less poop you have in the street, the less worms, eggs left behind in the street. You must remember these children play outside their homes. Children walk to school. They have playgrounds in the schools. The dog poop leaves worms, parasite eggs in the in the ground. Children get quite sick from uh, ticks. They get quite sick from worms. They get quite sick from fungus infections and ringworm. So. At, at first of all, the health will improve. Rabies will go down, health will improve. After that, 
mental health can improve, safety can improve, because as we build a relationship, as we understand the great gift that is a dog, the dogs are very smart and very loving and very caring, and they come into this world as a partner to mankind. So I think not only will the streets uh, and the people of Nepal become healthier, the people of Nepal will become more emotionally healthy. Yeah. <laughs>